Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will be answering an objection that I received on a Sabbath video I did. So I was, uh, the, the title of the video was the Sabbath versus Sunday debate. And I was sharing some thoughts on that according to what the Bible says, what God has to say about that. And we saw the, in, uh, the significance or the importance of the Sabbath. But you know, there was a comment that needs to be addressed right now. Um, I thought of replying, but I guess this is the best way because I know most of you have the same question. So without any further ado, let's get into the question. I will be dissecting the comment for you and we're going to be studying the word of God together as we do that. So the person says, I was wondering about Paul's address to the church in Romans 14, where he was basically saying that each one should choose which day to set aside to worship the Lord. Pause. Let's pause right there. So in Romans chapter 14, Paul does not tell people to choose a day of worship. He says, if it happens that you one regards a day above another day, he never mentions worship necessarily, but he's talking about what day a person chooses. For example, think of it this way. You know how people worship throughout the week every day? Like the story about, um, what's his name? Peter and John. We, we read that it was about 3 p.m. let's say, and uh, about the third hour, soon the third hour, the ninth hour, right? About the ninth hour. And that's where they went to church to pray or to do whatever they did. That time was not necessarily something that saved them. They could have decided to do it another time, right? And then another person might choose, okay, I want to worship the Lord on Tuesday and have prayer meetings on Tuesday. Another person may say, I want to do it on Wednesday. That does not constitute salvation. That's what Paul is talking about, really. But anyways, let's move forward. We'll talk about all these things in detail. So he continues to say, and not, it says, and not argue over holidays, which, uh, which man-made calendars highlight for us. Right, so that's true. What also Paul is saying is, if you read the, the verses, if in fact, let's go to, um, let's go to Romans 14. So verse number five, it says, one man esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. So this is more inward facing. It's what a man esteems to be. So I decide which day. I decide Tuesday is best. I dis decide um, Friday is best. So what Paul is saying, what man decides doesn't matter, right? What you decide does not matter. And we're gonna get into the deeper details of this, but let me just finish the comment uh, so that we are fair here. Uh, the earth turns, the sun burns, and the plants grow and die in their season. And yet no plant, insect, or animal is aware of the names of our weekdays. So he's, the person is saying, you know, days doesn't matter, that continuity doesn't matter. But at the same time, it actually matters. Because think about it, we have a year with how many days? 365 days, we have, uh, we have a day with 24 hours. Why is it that the week is seven days and it's so specific? Why seven? There must be a reason because it's the only cycle that does not align with the natural order of things. It must be divine. And so therefore, when Paul is saying, it doesn't matter which day you choose, you decide. He is saying wherever, whichever day you have authority to decide. So it does not include the day that God decides. If any man esteems another day better than the other, fine, do whatever you want. But wait, the Sabbath is different because it's not a day we esteem, it's a day that God esteems better than other days. So then th there's a conflict between what you want and what God wants. And whenever that is in conflict, Paul makes it very clear, you have to follow what the Lord says. But let's continue. Nature doesn't have a clue which day it is, but we do because we are conscious and God wanted us to be aware of what's happening. Unless if you want to be like nature, the brood beasts and just, you know, be like them, which is not what God created us to be. They do not have, mind you, the image of God. We do. So there's something we need to learn about time, which would translate into eternity. As long as the 24 hour rotation cycle remains intact, fine, but the Sabbath is not based on that. And, and then continue to say the ecosystems that balance life on our planet have no clue if it's a Wednesday or a Saturday. True. 
there's no way to account for the seven week cycle. And yes, nature has no clue where it came from because it originated from God. God is the only explanation for the Sabbath because it does not align with the rest of creation's order. And yet, creation praises the Creator every day. So should we. But the Sabbath is very unique because God says it is the day, my day. It doesn't say the day you esteem. No, no. It's the day that God esteems. Listen to Exodus chapter 20 from verse 8 to 11. I'll just recite the first few verses. It says, remember the Sabbath day. Why would God tell us to remember something that he does not esteem? Well, continues to say, to keep it holy. Which of the day is holy in the Bible? Tell me, which of the day is pronounced holy? Then it says to keep it holy. Then it says, six days you shall labor, do all thy work, do your thing, whatever you esteem, which day is best or which no, is not best. But the seventh day is the day of the Lord. You do not have right to esteem. Okay, you don't have any right for or to estimation when it comes to God's day. It's already been decided. He esteems it best than all other days. Jesus Christ, as was his custom, stood up for to read. We are told in Luke chapter 4 verse 16, it was his habit to go to celebrate the Sabbath. He was, he is Lord of the Sabbath. And, and so the comment continues to say, perhaps we are mistaken to think that God is watching to see if we get the spelling of the day correct. Of course he's not. God is not watching to see if we get his, uh, the day correct. But there's a reason he made that day on that specific day. And if we, do not, if we do not align with his blessings, then we are missing out. Because he says, blessed is the man that does this, that keeps his foot from polluting the Sabbath. You are blessed by keeping the Sabbath. So it's not so much as what God gets, it's more for us. The, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So it's all about us, okay? So he's not looking, but we are missing out. And the continuous says, just choose one out of the seven. No, no, you do not have right to choose one out of the seven. God has already done that for you. Romans 14 is not talking about us choosing which day is the Sabbath, no. Romans 14 is talking about what, it's talking about the domain under which we have right to choose anything. But when it comes to Sabbath, we cannot decide. If we decide the Sabbath, do you know what we're doing? We are blaspheming God, the highest level of blas blasphemy, which is why the Sabbath will play a big role in the end of time. Because when you claim the Sabbath, you claim authority over creation. You claim to be God, which is the devil's idea. In Isaiah chapter 14, he says, I will be like the Most High. And the Most High created in six days, but on the seventh day he rested. And he blessed the seventh day. He set it apart. He sanctified it. It is his seal, a sign of his authority and power, a sign of who he is and what he wants us to be. So the devil in the last days will play, will try to act out God's role of Sabbath. He will set aside a fake, furious Sabbath and by so doing, call everybody to worship on that day, uh, worship him as God. So the choice is yours now. Are you going to follow man-made Sabbath, which honors Satan, or are you going to follow God's Sabbath, which honors God? Well, thank you for watching. The choice is yours.